Hey everybody and welcome back to the Average Woman Podcast. I am Miss Nicole coming at you today with another topic that is near and dear to my heart. So today I want to talk about caring for your man or caring for your loved one when they sick. You know, especially like, so it may come a time that your man may really get sick. I mean, or it may become a time when you really get sick and you really need to, you got to take care of him. You have to step your game up and you have to care for him. Um, First of all, okay, only a woman is really going to be able to nurture and take care of a man. Okay? Because... (laughs) It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of pressure. And you're going to get some sleepless nights. You're going to be very alone. If you don't have no sisters to support you, you're going to be by yourself. You're going to go through a lot. And um, if you walk away, if you walk away, it's a judgment for that. If you stick around, it's a judgment for that. You know, some women can't handle it and they walk away and you know, everybody got their own, you know, I, I I don't, you know, I can't really say, I know, I, I treat people how I want to be treated. You understand? I treat people how I want people, tell me the truth. Be straight up with me. Because guess what? That's how I'm going to be with you. If, if we women, when we dealing with each other, we need to abide by three rules. You need to, don't lie on me. Well, I ain't going to say lie on me. I ain't going to say lie on me. We'll say, don't steal from me. Don't fuck my man. And don't tell on me. You know, keep my business to yourself if I'm talking to you and if I can find you. You know what I'm saying? So that is like a basic common courtesy. That if we as women would just hold ourselves to that, that was that would totally step our game up. That would totally help us step our game up because we need to have we need to handle each other with a little bit more respect and care as women. You know, you you a mother, and this girl that you got to beef with, she a mother, but you will go and beat her down in the streets. Like, that's what it do. Like, that's what it do. Like, it's all right for you to, uh, like, it's all right for you to be, you know, beating on her and and fighting and, and just have no respect for the next mother. You know, you know what it's like to go through labor and you know what it's like to to get pregnant and cramps and all the stuff that you go through but you'll still look at another one of your sisters tear up her car rip her hair out out of her head out of out the sockets of her head I mean and then you will, you will run around here and think <laughs> that some kind of way that I'm not a curse or I'm not going to receive payback for that you know you got to you got to turn your you got to step your game up. You got to stop thinking and moving like a child. Women, we once you once you start having children, I and what I I I nah, we and we we can't think like that no more. Cuz unfortunately, it ain't about you, you, you. You have elected to become a part of something else. When you bring children into this world, you have chosen to become a part of something. That person is your child. 365, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That's you. And you have to learn how to start thinking, elevating your thinking to think higher than what you've been trained to think like. You, you've, you've basically... You basically just decided that you were just going to continue resting and being comfortable being a child your whole life and continue walking as a child when it, when you, you've been overdue to begin to walk as a woman. See, the problem is, is that when you were pregnant, well, 
we'll get into that after these messages. Hey everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Average Woman Podcast. I am that lady, Miss Nicole, coming at you today. So, we are talking about healing your man, and where I left off was we were I was letting you know that you're not going to be able to do anything to help him if you're not functioning in full woman status. Okay? You got to be in full woman mode. Okay? Now, so, in the midst of you getting pregnant, somebody should have told you that once you start having kids, all this, I'm in the streets and I'm on and I'm me and what you want don't matter no more. Everything you about should be about your child. That's why a lot of y'all, y'all say, I love my kids, but I'm not happy. The reason why you're not happy is because you're not spending and taking care of your kids correctly. Because if you are, if you were 100% committed to being a mother and raising your kids correctly, you would be happy. Facts. You would be happy. If you was totally committed to to, to being a good mother and raising your kids righteously and doing right by them, you would be happy. You know why you would be happy? Because you would be so involved in them and making sure they had what they need and making sure that you kept their father around and, and, and promoted and had a good environment for them. They wouldn't ha- you wouldn't have time to worry about anything else. That's what you don't know. But see, all that is a sacrifice. Because we love going out to the club. We want to go out. We want to have fun with our friends. But once we start having children, that shit is over with. Your best friend is your daughter and your son. Well, really, no, your best friend is your husband. Because you can't put all that stress on the kids. But you love your kids. Nothing else should come above them. No one else is more important. No other conversation is more necessary. Everything you do is about them. I'm telling you, when you re- when you change your spirit to think like that, man, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. You're putting them first. Because who is going to love them if you don't? Nobody. If you don't let them know, look, you are the world. But you got to teach them and you got to promote that they're the world, but do it in righteousness by telling them the truth. You know, you can't just sugarcoat and be all sweet and nice to them and all that the other stuff and don't keep it real in their time. You know, I ain't saying tell them all about, you know, you know, I shouldn't have to explain what I'm saying, but you should know what I'm saying. But if you don't know what I'm saying, we need to have a private session and talk and we'll be <laughs> we'll do that, too, from time to time. Because as I said, queenfromcreation at gmail.com, I'm always here for that conversation because it needs to be had. If you don't know, you can't fix it. If you don't know what you're doing is a problem, how are you ever going to change it? You know? <clears throat> and that, and like I said, I didn't make the rules. The ways that we were raised and the, and the things, the values and stuff that we were brought up on are not, uh, are not beneficial to us. They hold us back. They stopping our growth. They stopping us from coming together and loving one another and promoting good shit in our community. You know? I mean, I, I know all of you see that. I'm sure everybody has been affected in some way by violence, drugs, uh, childless homes, uh, fatherless homes. You know? I'm sure everybody got that cracked out, cracked out uncle or cracked out aunt. But see, we grew up listening to them tell us all kind of stuff. But the thing is that they was lying. See, a lot of people will just tell you what they want you to hear or they'll tell you what you want to hear just to get over on you. And that's all they did. They told you what you wanted to hear to get over on you. Oh, if you think I'm a good person and you think that you could do what you want to do because I'm going to say all the wrong shit to you. So as long as I'm saying all the wrong shit to you, you're going to love the hell out of me. Because I'm sugarcoating the truth from you. And everybody want their feelings protected. <laughs> like a fool. What is, so what, what, so what about your feelings? Your feelings ain't going to make, can't stop the truth. Your feelings don't change the truth. 
my feelings don't change the truth. And I totally understand that, accept it, deal with it. It's whatever. Because I'm, I, I accept. You gotta, I, you just gotta deal with it. And you gotta understand what shit not working. If shit don't work, it just don't work, y'all. If it don't work, it don't work. And the only thing that you can do is try to do something to, to change it and make it better. You know? But hell, a lot of us don't even want to do that because some of us, to really some of us, it ain't even worth fixing. You know? And that's a shame because at the end of the day, you're, it's your happiness that you like it. It's your, ha- it's your happiness from, from just stop entertaining the silly stuff. Stop entertaining the, the Nicki Minaj's, the, the silly love rhetoric and dummy talk. You know, you're doing good. You listening to me? I'm telling you, you need some real talk in your ear. Real talk make you wake up. And that's what I'm trying to do. Wake you up to reach a higher level of yourself. Reminding you of who you are and what it really means to be a woman. These little, these little, these little tail lies to your vision. These little superstars and all that. There, that, that ain't no real woman stuff. They ain't making no real woman moves. You know. What's, what's so proud? What's so, so wonderful and proud about everybody seeing your ass on TV? Nothing. They say a woman shall be known by her works. What's the works of a whore? period. I'd rather you not know my works because you don't know who I am, but when you do look up a sister, the works is there. You know? And it's to be respected. And, she, and she's able to maintain her respect and her dignity. You know? And that's that's something that is hard to hold on to in Babylon is your respect and your dignity. Because y'all give that away with a, a 50 cent dollar back coupon. Here's my, here's my respect and my dignity right here. I don't need respect and dignity. I'll still go to your store and shop even if you spit in my face. So, cuz I don't have no respect and no dignity for myself. I'm just I'm just a cook. I'm just, you know, uh, I'm I'm just a NICCA. It don't matter. You know, I don't have no dignity about myself. And basically when you when you patron when you patronize people shops who who treat people bad, clearly that's what you say about yourself. And see, if and the thing is, if our men were in control, we wouldn't allow that to happen because the men would hold themselves at a higher uh, level than we do. We just like, we don't care. As long as it ain't us, we going to get us some bundles because I got to look good. But this is my whole thing, too. And I might have to change this title because I just done went all to the left. But this is my thing. When you going to get that hair done, and you sitting in the in the shop getting them nails done, who the hell is you doing that for? Who is you doing that for? Are you doing that to get a man? Cause if a men if men tell you that they don't like you to get your nails done, they don't like those long nails, then why do you do it? Wouldn't you wouldn't you want to do what's appealing to a man so the man will want you? Instead of doing what you want to do and thinking that he going to have to like you the way you are costume and all. Doesn't that make sense? Be the kind of girl that he likes. Take your time and learn him and allow yourself to be molded by him. Doesn't that make sense? That way in the later days when shit pop off. And he's forced to take an early retirement or or something going. So y'all have some major life issues. You can stand by his side and build him up and love him and help him through his his hard times. You could be there for him. But you cannot be there for him if you're, if you're, if you operating as a a, a young girl, a young-minded girl. And you cannot be there for him if you are not comfortable with and, and and you haven't worked your own shit out you got so much stuff bag lady you got so many issues bag lady everything is a problem bag lady and you just can't put it down and let it go why I don't know why do you like carrying emotional baggage with you like that's a badge of honor telling all your problems everything like that's who you are I'll never know 
For me, I can't wait to get over some kind of negative experience. I want to enjoy the good shit. But some of you, you want to enjoy the negative shit and wonder why you're so miserable because you're always enjoying the negative shit and not trying to get to the good shit. I need a lot of good shit and less negative shit. Damn. Ugh. Extremely stress is extremely frustrating because you are the you are the conductor of your you are the controller of your own happiness. You could just choose to be happy. You could just choose to say, you know what, what I thought wasn't wasn't as important as I thought it was, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, so I'm just gonna chill and fall back and just let him do what he wants to do. I'm gonna follow him and just see what he got, see what he do. They might surprise you. They might surprise you. They might surprise you. You might can't even believe what you what what what, what happens. You 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 might surprise yourself. You understand? You might that man might surprise you, because the bottom line is you really don't know what a man is. You never had one. Your mama didn't have one. You didn't. You wasn't. You don't know what it is. And even if you do know what it is, you don't know how to treat one, because it ain't no manual about that. Ain't no manual because every man is different. The only way you can learn a man is to sit and listen and learn from a man. He gonna tell you who he is, what he about, what he like, what he don't like, where his mama come from, what his highs and his lows was. He gonna tell you all that. He gonna tell you. And in the later days, after he done prophesied all that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to you, you're supposed to take that and use that to heal him when he needs you. And we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, everybody, and we are back. And this is the Average Woman Podcast, and I'm that lady, Miss Nicole, coming at you today, talking that good love to you, just helping you think about things from a different perspective that you might not have thought about. You know what I'm saying? Whether it works or not, you 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 got the truth. I'm giving you the truth from, from just to my best ability to break it down. I'm not saying that my advice is, is the concrete, absolute. But damn it, at least I'm going to just tell you my perspective. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not lying to you. But I don't see nobody else really trying to drop some knowledge on you to help you overcome this foolishness that you own. Because, I mean, I mean they, they deserve women. And you are not going to be no woman acting like no little girl. Your mind all beat out. Your priorities messed up. You can't cook. You can't do nothing to help them. I mean, when, when we're in the midst of a crisis, you need to have a level head so you could keep the kids calm and, and, and still function to assist him. Because he don't need you freaking out. He already freaking out. He need his, he need, that. that's when you step up being a partner. I got you. We got this part. I'm going to go do this here. I got this here. You got to be on point. And a lot of y'all not on point. Y'all, I told you, you, you talk like little girls. You act like little girls. You don't know nothing. You don't try to educate yourself. When you was in school, you didn't do real good, but you the first one to jump up in somebody's face and try to out-talk them and tell them something. Sit down. Please. Please. Sit down. Now is the time to learn something. And the way that you learn is you be quiet and you listen and you open your mind to accept the truth of what this person is telling you. That's how you learn to be submissive to your husband. If your husband say, I don't like a woman that do this, 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 and this, and this, then don't you do that, 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 and that. Simple. That'll keep stress off your man's heart. Playing games with him. Oh, you not the baby daddy. I swear you are some of the silliest women I ever seen in my life to tell a man that that's not his child. Do you know the damage that you cause to a relationship when you do simple stuff like that? No, you do not. And that's the reason why you do it. Because you don't understand the impact and the feelings that they have wrapped up in these kids. Because you're selfish and you're heartless. Because only a selfish and heartless woman would even fix her lips to even tell a man after you done took him through nine months of your stinking ass that that's not his child. After he done pulled and wiped the shit off the baby, you are dirty 
dirty woman. And shame on you. And it's a special judgment for a woman like you. You special. You hear me? (sighs) I despise women like that. I despise a woman that option that operates like there is no no limit to her filthiness and her lies and her maliciousness. I despise women like that. That's one of my I just I despise a woman that can just operate like she don't have a heart. She don't care who she hurt. She's just out to hurt. And and thinks nothing of it. And in the later days you want me to consider your feelings. How? How can I consider the feelings of a person that never gave a damn about my feelings and, and just took me through the ringer? But because you the mother of my child, you supposed to get a pass? That's I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Respect is due to a dog, let alone another human being. Let alone the person that we share our bed with and we give our body to. Let alone. But that's just how I feel. Because you know I'm crazy anyway, right? I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You probably shouldn't even listen to what I'm saying. Because I probably don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm just some old crazy black woman talking that old crazy shit. You know? Ain't no telling. She don't know what she's talking about. And I accept that. I can deal with all that. But one thing that I do know, I I know how to heal my man and keep his and keep his dignity and respect intact. You know, I know I know I I can recognize a man when I see him. I know how to I know how to submit and obey, and my ass just as fat as the next one. I. That's right. That's right. And I don't have to put all my business out there in the street. You understand? Because we make it do what it do around right here. So, like I say, and 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 it, and it ain't no pride. It's no pride. I'd rather you, I, I'd rather be known for my good works. I'd rather be known for my good works. When my daughter, when my daughter hears me talk, and my sisters hear me talk, and, and the, 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 the girls who gonna hear my YouTube pages in years to come, they gonna, they gonna think, Miss Nicole, that lady right there, she really was there. She really was trying to tell us something. You know, I want my works to speak for themselves because that's where that's where the glory comes from, to being able to really reach our mind and understand that, like, you're not going to get you're not going to have good results doing what you're doing. I done seen women do the same thing y'all doing and been miserable. It don't work. You can't you can't ice skate up the hill and there's no change to the game. The game is always going to be the same. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything is that same old shit. But we want to pretend like it's not, but it absolutely is. And it'll never be anything else but that same old shit. No matter how you try to put it, put it on. The Dougie gonna always be the Dougie. No matter what you want to put on it, the boogaloo to this, that dance is always going to be that dance. And there's really nothing that we can do about it. You know, I'm sorry about these cars, y'all. I be sitting outside on the porch trying to enjoy nature. And I just, ugh. I just want to get somewhere where I can be quiet and enjoy and record and really speak. So, but I digress. But yeah, you you got to you you in order to love a man, you got to love yourself. Okay? And we're definitely going to talk about that when we come back after these messages. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Average Woman Podcast. I am that lady, Miss Nicole, and today we are talking about how to heal your man. And another another important aspect of healing your man is you have to be able to love yourself and take care of yourself and be a self-containing, self-understanding unit. Okay? I understand totally that you know you have to be treated a certain way in order for you to be able to treat somebody else that way i get it i get it because 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 chivalry and 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 all this stuff starts at home 
uh, charity, the first place charity starts is at home. So you have to feel sorry for yourself and take care of yourself first in order to be able to love somebody. You, you will never be without, but you got to put, you got to pay, play by the rules. Mama is the, mama always the biggest one in the house. Cause mama get some, mama get samples of the best food. Cause mama cook. She know where every piece of this at. She got, mama is always good so for you you don't you should never be selfish mama control all the all the uh all the bills all the finances she run the kitchen the 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 bathroom she clean she run the whole house she get just about all daddy money so why would mama be selfish if mama selfish mama mama hard if mama is selfish everybody suffer if mama's selfish, everybody suffers because mama does not have to be selfish because mama runs the shit when she in order. You run everything. A lot of time, your husband don't want to deal with the bills, and if he do, let him. As long as he give you some bread to do what you need to do around the house, what you complaining about? You can't give none. You can't give none to your friends and be tricking on your girlfriends, and that's good. You shouldn't. Ain't nobody saying that you gotta lower your your maintenance class and all that there but let's be reasonable if you have more than if you have a child ain't no way that you should be buying $300 wigs and your baby can't read and your baby needs stuff if your baby don't have a bed in their room but you got a $300 wig slap yourself y'all priorities fucked up everybody should have a bedroom set that's the basics for that's the basics for life a bed a bed is a basics for life that ain't even like that's not even optional is what I'm telling you a bed is not optional, <laughs> but you, but when you but when your parenting is messed up, a bed is optional. You got to sleep on the floor on a mat, or on the floor on a uh, on a on a mattress, because to me that's optional. And I'm telling you, man, it's a price to pay for stuff like that. It's a price to pay. You're not gonna be happy. You're not gonna be happy till you do right by your children. That's when you're gonna be happy. I'm telling you. You can't be happy operating all outside, doing doing what you want to do. You think that God going to bless you? And like I say, I know you don't believe in God, but God believe in you. And he will deal with you. You better believe that. I'm telling you. I ain't lying to you. I'd rather, I rather live my life, whether I believe it or not. I'd rather live my life like there is judgment for me on the other side because you do know you going to die. And when you die, something happens. Okay, you don't know when, you don't know where, you don't know how, but you do know you're going to go. And when you get to that other side, somebody's going to be over there. And you better make sure that whatever you did on this side made that person on that other side good, or you going you gonna to get judgment, period, whatever that may be. So like I said, I would rather live my life trying to do what's right. I could be nasty. I could steal, lie, cheat. My husband's sick. I could be this place, that place, leave him here by himself. Don't care about him. Don't take care of him. I can make choices to do anything that I want to do, but I choose to do right. I choose to allow myself to do that. And that's why God going to bless you because in the end, when you choose to do right by God, he going to choose to do right by you. I don't care about man. I don't search for approval from you ladies. I don't care if somebody got a problem with what I say because I'm choosing to do right by God. And he said that you need to tell them what's right according to Titus 2 and 3. I'm a 2 and 3 through 5. I'm going to tell you what's right to get that blood off, my, off me because I had to learn the shit the hard way. So everything that I had to learn the hard way, I don't want you to have to learn the hard way. So, and I don't want to be right all the time. I want you to take my advice and understand that I'm saying this for your betterment and do better. Because you could have better, but you got to make better decisions. You got to choose better for yourself. Don't do it for me. Do it for yourself. Don't do it because I say do it. Do it because you, you want to do it. And you know that this same old mediocre stuff ain't going to work. If you want to have a better life, if you want to have any kind of life, whatever kind of life you want, you can have it. <clears throat> but it's rules to it, y'all. It's, a, it's, it's rules to get in a job. Once you get a job, you got to follow the rules. Just like that's just how it is with a relationship. 
that same honor, glory, and respect y'all give to 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 the uh, to the supervisors and the boss, you got to get that same honor, respect to the to your husband. Not because of anything that he doing, just because that's your husband, that's your boss. Because that's your God, you give him your life. Because that's your husband, you honor him. Period. And it's not flexible, it's not optional, it's not negotiable. It is what it is, y'all. I didn't make the rules. I'm a, I'm a willing follower of the rules. Get like that. Become a willing follower of the rules. And watch, watch you be blessed. Watch you be blessed. And, I, and I'm saying monetary, you're going to be raining down bags of money on you, but you'll be at peace. You'll be able to enjoy your children and, and, and enjoy your husband and enjoy your life, not worrying about everybody else, not worrying about this world. Concentrate on what you can control, just your little four walls. You know? And with that, I say shalom.